So what's your guess? Is it rap or no? Well, no, it, it's clearly not PPF, but as far as I knew, and I'm no R8 GT expert by any means. Yet. I didn't, never. Um, no. <laughs> well, no, I would like to be, but that's besides the point. Um, I didn't think they made these in Suzuka, but it does look a lot like Suzuka. Okay, so I was just wrong all across the board. It's black, orange, there is no white. It's either silver or Suzuka gray. So this is the same color as Welcome back to another salvage story where we give you an in-depth look into the auto salvage industry and let you know in the end how much money we made or lost on each car. You might be having a little bit of deja vu because we recently did a salvage story on an R8 that was a V10 also. This one though, this one's special. a 2012 Audi R8 GT, an extremely limited production number car, 333 made around the world to be exact. And while it may look similar, this car is massively different from any other first gen R8 that you are going to find. As you can see it is a beautiful Suzuka gray matte with matte PPF on top of it. Now that doesn't really affect anything as far as the parts value goes, but why we're so intrigued by that is because... is also Suzuka Gray. Suzuka Gray Metallic, a very slightly different variation of the same base color. This car is also not a GT, but it is a 2014 base lifted V10 Plus that happens to have a nice little supercharger under the back hatch. This car also shares a different fate than the GT. This one, it's gonna get fixed. So if you're here for R8 content and you're not already subscribed to the channel, go find the button now. As for the GT, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get it running. And it definitely, definitely needs a bath. About that time, eh, chaps? Righto. Those are my best tongs, okay? One of the special parts about the GT is the matte or satin carbon fiber finish that you'll see all throughout the car. Makes it very special and desirable as far as this entire engine bay trim kit. The rear wing on the GT is the same beautiful satin or matte finish on the carbon fiber. They are very, very special and very, very expensive, but they are also very difficult to get off. So it looks like we are going to be fabricating a tool to get down there to get to the bolt. The GT has a lot of very special body panels on it, but the most desirable might very well be this rear hatch. It is a Full carbon fiber construction, lightweight rear glass. There is no rear defroster on the GT. 
When we get this thing off, we're going to find out just how much lighter it is than a normal piece. Thirty-two pounds with our, you know, officially unofficial weighing techniques on the freight scale here. We do still have the rear hatch from the previous salvage story dismantle and with them side by side, you can see the massive differences. The side vents are completely different. You have the additional vents on the bottom here and then as noted, completely clear rear glass versus a rear defroster and those bottom vents are completely functional these openings here run directly into the air box massive massive difference looks like right about 18 pounds there is maybe a pound or two variance in the scale so really really close to a 20 pound weight saving just in the rear hatch alone maybe equally as desirable as that rear hatch less money but for what they are still worth a pretty penny the side mirrors we do have just a tad bit of damage to the actual light fixture itself luckily that is replaceable what people go after is the beautiful satin dry carbon look and more importantly these bases are different than the carbon mirrors that you see on some of the other models the matte carbon fiber scuff plates with the illuminated R8 GT logo are unique to the GTs. And then also more of that satin or matte finish carbon fiber on the door panels, which we will be selling as a complete set with the trim on the dash and also the console. This is what the mirror looks like fully disassembled. You have four main pieces, but to get from the complete mirror to this is quite the nerve wracking process. first batch of parts have been removed from the car and listed. We wanted to get this thing up before the weekend, generate some buzz around it. This car, I'm not sure how quickly the parts are going to move because the price tag on some of them is enormous because of their rarity. But I am curious on the attention that the car generates. So whether we get sales from it or not, I think that the next couple hours and through the weekend are gonna be very, very interesting. The amount of people that are looking for parts that came off of this car. Well, we've hit our first roadblock, wheel key. This does look like an OEM wheel key, but I checked the glove box. It's not there. I did find one of these awesome owner's manual cases. We got this on our R8 GT, which is now the go-kart, which I don't think I've had the opportunity to mention in this video yet. Normally the key would be up front, which for obvious reasons, it's not here. This is a pretty decent time to kind of get a little bit closer look at the damage as I haven't really highlighted it yet in this video, but you can see how extensive the damage is. I mean, look, look at that. I'm, I'm bending it with my hand. It's just ready to shear off. That's how far back the damage went. Absolutely insane. Oddly enough, over here, this outer structure looks like it mostly survived. It looks like that bent with the frame rail there. And I guess it looks like the bottom one actually ripped off. 
where it attaches to the frame rail but still just absolutely wild amount of damage normally this would continue down straight over somewhere like over here we do have one shot though of not having to load this thing up on a trailer and run it over to audi to get them to break it loose with their master wheel lock set car that i showed you earlier in the video the supercharged car that i'm going to be fixing a little bit later in the year i believe that it has the front compartment stuff All right, that is the factory key, so we have a chance. I think they said that there are 22 different variations of the OEM wheel lock keys, so the odds are against us. No way. It's the right one. No way. I can't believe that it's the same one. I have been waiting to get this wheel off just to take a look at this damage and man, that is just absolutely ridiculous and impressive and heartbreaking because that's going to keep us from having a complete set of carbon ceramics for the R8. Caliper sustained just a little bit of damage too, but we'll just have to take what we can get. Also, just notice that it looks like we have an adjustable set of coilovers on here, and they look to be factory. The R8 go-kart definitely does not have these. It just has lowering springs. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research into what these actually are. Like the rear hatch, the rear bumper is unique to the GT. It's a composite construction, has the opening side vents on the side, and also a rear diffuser that is unique to the GT. Straight up to the photo area. Does this thing have an exhaust? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure it's got exhaust. Oh wow, yeah, it's got of some it. sort. I don't know what it is. I'm not making this up. It says F-U-C-H-S. One of the talking points on the R8 GT, the power plant is not very different. It makes a little bit more horsepower thanks to a tune, and I believe that the factory exhaust is uh, valved, a little bit more free-flowing, so that's how it picks up, I believe, like 30 horsepower. You heard this thing run. It didn't really sound like it had a super loud exhaust on it. I do want to check with Alex real quick though and see how we've done in roughly the first three hours that the for sale listing on this car has been posted. How we doing bro? How's the interest? Like buzzards on a dead deer. Really? Yes. Can't say I've heard that analogy before, but uh, we'll roll with it. I think first, everyone gets the idea. First for everything. Seems like the biggest things that I thought would be rear wing setup, taillights, carbon interior. All right, um, so how many, how many messages do we have? Seem to be, of course, this is the classic one. I'll buy the whole car. Yeah, sure you will. You could have bought it at auction. You yeah, missed your opportunity. People want the whole car. So first thing up Monday, we're going to be diving into the mechanical and we will go ahead and do an update and see what has sold just over the weekend. <laughs> One loan sale from the weekend, and it's a piece that I wasn't really expecting to move this quickly. The carbon fiber scuff plates, they are unique to the GT as mentioned. So somebody either really wanted them or really needed them because they come with a $1,500 price tag. One way or another, I'll take it. It looks like only two of the wheels survived or as my shipping manager Eric likes to call them rims the tires themselves are all trash they're date coded out and dry rotted but I guess two is better than none now I want to head back over to the car I want to get that exhaust off and get a better look at it
Lee was saying that he recognizes this name brand and thought it might be a factory option, but it looks very, very aftermarket to me. I did a quick check on eBay Motors to see if there's anything that even resembles it that the a factory car could come with. And everything from the factory looks very, very different. Pete just brought up a very, very interesting question on the materials of this, because it does look kind of burnt like titanium, maybe. I hit it with the grinder. <laughs> is there any other way to test it? I thought you said it was f or something. It is. <laughs> that is. Look, look right on the side. Okay, so it looks like they make a valved version and a non-valved version. I don't see any valves, so. Pick it up though, because it was really light when we just unloaded it. Uh, no, too, that, too heavy? That's okay. too heavy, I, th I think. Maybe Pete's stronger than I'm giving him credit for. Well, the only way that we know to figure out if something's titanium or not is to hit it with a grinder and see what color the sparks are. But that's not necessarily the best idea when you're looking to sell something. We'll let this simmer for just a couple minutes. One other question mark that we had earlier were these factory appearing adjustable coilovers. And I did do a little bit of research into this and it looks like the GT models did come with this suspension it was a option it looks like they were very expensive to start with right around seventy five hundred dollars as an option but because there are aftermarket versions they won't command nearly that price another unique part of the gt is the carbon ceramics in 2012 when this car was built i believe this was the only r8 that came with the carbon ceramics. Now in 2014 and 2015, you did have the face lifted versions of these cars and they're generally considered the gen one and a half. So they're not gen ones. They're kind of a middle ground between the gen ones, the gen twos, they got the better transmission and a lot of the exclusive parts from the GT were able to be optioned onto some of those models. And then the V10 pluses came with a lot of those pieces like the carbon ceramics. Everything is listed for the GT. We have the final numbers, which means that this is the end of the line for this very, very special Audi. A fun fact that I have withheld until this point, this will be the last time on YouTube for the GT, but this is not the first time that this car has been on YouTube. A YouTuber by the name of Saab Kyle 04 reviewed this car something like 11 years ago when it was nearly brand new at a dealership out in New Mexico, Nevada, something along those lines. So really interesting fun fact. If you're curious about what this car looked like when it was brand new, you can go watch that video. That's more than a decade old at this point. Before I tell you what we paid for this car and we are in the big baller division again, the high stakes category here at Lee C Parts, I do wanna first go over all of the parts that are listed. A couple special parts that we didn't touch on while we were disassembling the car. You can see we have 126 parts for a grand total of $113,732, which is a enormous number. That's a ton of parts too, 126, that's a lot. We are gonna look at this in descending order. The motor, as we touched on earlier, it's not really much different than any of the other V10s. We're not gonna spend a lot of time there. The transmission, again, another one of these Artronic transmissions, which is really, I think, both of our qualms with this car is that it it, it should have been a manual. Like, 110%. Period. And then, even if it was going to be an automatic, it should have been a good one. This transmission sucks. 
And there are people that are in denial about the Artronics, but at the end of the day, they're just, they're not good transmissions. If you want a transmission that feels like a manual, go buy a manual. Otherwise, get a transmission that actually shifts fast. All of these big dollar GT specific parts right here are, as we discussed earlier, big price tags. I don't anticipate any of this stuff sticking around for more than probably about 90 days. The R8 GT does have special tail lights on it. They are unique to the GT. They have the black housing as opposed to the solid red of the more base model R8s. We have these listed for $2,000. I do think that these will move pretty quickly. They are very desirable. The headliner on the competition package R8s, which is what the GT is, comes with a kind of cool, unique feature where it is stitched. This one happens to be red stitch. The one from our car was silver stitch. One other unique fact about the headliners is that we have not figured out a way to get them out without removing some sort of glass piece. In this instance, the windshield was broken. We went ahead and just pulled it out, but the windshield is also a talking point on the GTs. It is thinner. So we had to replace ours on the go-kart. We know that it is a special part from Audi. Really just kind of a, a cool talking point more or less because we threw it in the trash because it was damaged anyway. The last R8 GT specific part that I want to touch on is the seats. These ones, not in good shape. They have blown bags. They are the two-tone Alcantara with leather with red stitching, which is very, very nice. But the reason I want to talk about them is because of the Eurospec GTs that come with a awesome set of composite bucket seats. Extremely lightweight. They never made it to the United States. It is a damn shame that they never did because they are awesome. So who do we blame? Is it Audi or is it the U.S. government? We're going with the government. We blame the government whenever we can. Now on to the expenses. The purchase price for the car is the big one, $37,543. One fun fact that we haven't had in any of these salvage stories, late fees. <laughs> we got hammered in late fees on this car. It took a while to get the car picked up to the tune of $205 in late fees. Once we finally got it picked up, the transport cost us $1,500, and it took right about a month to get the car from Las Vegas, and that was because the truck that was carrying it blew its motor somewhere in New Mexico. This is a new record. Like, we've never had a car sit anywhere a month after paying for it. Should we go into car carriers always lying about their motors blowing up? <laughs> this is one instance, they sent me pictures. They literally sent me pictures of this thing. They said it cost them $32,000 for a new motor for this truck. Took about two weeks to do the install on it. Labor on this car, I put the highest ever for a salvage story, $2,000 in labor. It took me a while to get this car apart. I recruited the help of Pete because it was taking me so long. We just have to be careful with all of those GT specific parts. It's very, very labor intensive for the photo, the shipping, as far as packaging, creating these, it's gonna be a lot of work. I think that's accurate. If not even higher, that was a lot, a lot. He is not lying about what you have to do to protect those carbon parts. The last thing you want to do is have a five, six, seven thousand dollar, whatever it is, carbon fiber piece get damaged in storage because honestly, we won't be able to live with that. Selling fees is always a 10% of the parts listed that accounts for credit card processing fees, eBay fees, $11,523 coming off. And then we get to that shipping expense, which again, this is the highest number that we have ever put on one of these salvage stories. I have $6,000 in shipping expense. We are gonna have to build a lot of crates for the hatch, for the rear bumper when they sell. If we sell a rear bumper from a Camaro, for example, it gets bubble wrapped, we send it down the road, we have a very, very low damage rate shipping items that way through the freight carriers that we use. But we're not risking that on a four, five, six, seven thousand dollar part. It's just not happening. We're gonna make sure it's protected. So we have the actual labor expense, the material expense, and then also the insurance expense on that shipment. And by we, let me clarify, he means Eric. So apologies, Eric, you're gonna have a fun couple weeks. Last up is the dead inventory number, which really brings this thing down into a realistic perspective. These are parts that we either never sell or we have to discount heavily to sell. On the last R8 salvage story, we did 20%. I did the same on this, but I think there's an argument to be made that it could be a tad bit less because the majority of the value in this car comes from those R8 GT specific parts that we know are going to sell and we're not going to have to discount them heavily. I can't argue with 20%. I think that is a accurate assessment. 
I always let Lee do the honor of giving the final theoretical net margin on this car. So it is a record, but I did think it was going to be more. And I think you did too. So did I. I, um, I did, yes. That's way closer than I thought it was going to be. $33,415. New high score, but for some reason that doesn't feel as... I, I was already like counting the money. I was just going to like buy a new Porsche. But I mean, we can't complain about $30,000, right? We're not complaining, yeah. but we are going to put it on the board and we are going to compare it to the other car that I've been chasing down for a long, long time and talk about why we're both kind of surprised by that number. So the car that I have been chasing down in this big baller division is this GT3 RS. Purchase price of $88,000 and produced a theoretical net margin of $30,000. $130,000 in parts produced. So when I saw a car that we bought for $37,000 that produced $115,000 in parts, I thought we were destined for a $40,000, $45,000 theoretical net margin. And it ended up being a whole lot closer than that. Look, I can't say that I'm thrilled that my awesome rebadged overpriced Volkswagen got topped by another overpriced rebadged Volkswagen. But at least it's a GT. And this car had a good run. This has been, this was the first salvage story, right? That's been a while, over a year at this point. I'll accept it. I'm, you know, I'm a Porsche guy. I'm not happy, but I mean, we made $33,000. So I guess we can put that one in use for another Porsche. Really one of the cool things that I'm seeing shaping out in this big baller division is that you have two very, very special high-end cars from two different manufacturers. This R8 was a great car, just like this Porsche was, but these are more run of the mill. They don't come up at auction very often, but they can be had on a somewhat regular basis. Cars like this are few and far in between. So to get into this division here, I think it's gonna take another really, really special car to get on the board there. What are STOs going for these days? <laughs> I don't think we can afford one of those yet. A couple more of those and we will. Now, the only problem I have with this whole board now, other than other than this here, we'll, we won't talk about that. We gotta do something about this, which I'm trying my best to do as we speak. So hopefully, hopefully we can get rid of that piece of trash. And that's gonna do it for the back end of the video here. A quick wrap up. If you're sticking around this long, I'm sure that you're used to seeing the salvage stories. Hopefully this one kept you entertained just like all the others that we have done. And we have plenty more coming down the pipeline as Carrington just alluded to. One special thing, you can head on over to my side channel. We are gonna do a little durability test on this carbon ceramic rotor. Since it's already broken anyway, we're gonna see really what it takes and how brittle these things actually are. Well, now my curiosity has peaked not only about this, but how many of those RE GT parts are gonna go missing in the next two months? And I'll just leave it at that. The thought did cross my mind, but at the end of the day, we haven't done enough of these salvage stories for me to put enough money in my pocket to be affording R8 GT parts. I am completely satisfied with barely being able to afford the R8 that I just bought. You guys can look forward to the rebuild on that a little bit later in the year. We have a couple other projects to get wrapped up. Me personally, the Viper Swap 240SX, the FD RX7 is actually making some progress you've seen it in the background of several videos I need to get both of those off my plate and then that supercharged Audi R8 will be up next Carrington keeps telling you guys he's gonna get going on the demon and I promise you he actually is gonna get going on the demon very very soon so look forward to that also as always thank you for tuning in we appreciate all the support we'll see you in the next video